Hi, welcome to my video. Uh, my name is Jeff Rhodes, and in this video series, we talk about Office 365 and SharePoint and related applications. And in this video, we're going to talk about how do you take a SharePoint list and then customize its form in Power Apps and specifically to uh, change it so that only particular users can have access to a control. So we already did a version of this video with InfoPath if you're using that older technology and this one is uh, with the newer Power Apps. So uh, here's a shout out to my book, The Creating Business Applications with Office 365. And uh, if you want to, you can uh, pre-order on Amazon. It's coming out in February, but I suspect it might actually be out sooner than that. And uh, I encourage you to subscribe. So I'm building these videos pretty quickly if you'd like to get notified when the new ones come out. Plus, it helps me if uh, I have people subscribing. So, all right, let's get started. So let's go into Office 365 and we'll jump into SharePoint. And we'll go into the same uh, site as we did our previous example on InfoPath. So um, we did one already with uh, that we call purchases. And the idea is if you purchased, say you have like the, the thing you want and the amount, and then you want to have a, a checkbox that says like approved by accounting. Uh, and we want to limit that to just people who are authorized to check that box. So that's what we're going to do. We'll come up to the gear and we'll say add an app. And we'll do a custom list. And we'll call it purchasing. The purchases, you can see I already did my info path one, but we'll call this one Power Apps. And we'll create. By the way, I don't like to put any spaces in there because we end up with all that percent 20 stuff. All right, so let's just go ahead and click on it. And you can see in our last one, we had to change it to classic view to get it uh, with to, to use InfoPath, but the default is Power App. So you'll see we'll be able to customize it there. But before that, let's add what we want into the list. So we'll go into the list settings and I like to add it this way. So we've got title and we can go in, we can create the column and we'll just do it quickly. So we'll just say amount Make it a number, maybe even a currency would be nice. There we go. Didn't want to, still thinking about it. And let's go in and create a column. And this will be our approved. Whoops. See, I already had that from before. We'll make it yes, no. And what's very important is we want to make its default value no so that we do that. All right, so we'll say OK. And if we go in and do new here, the default is a, just a standard SharePoint form. So notice we can put the title, we can put the amount, but we could change this, yes, no. And that's what we're trying to fix here. So, oh, and you see we actually had customized with Power Apps there. So maybe I'll just do that, but it doesn't really matter. I can do it here too. So we'll customize form. And what that'll do is launch us into Power Apps, which is great technology. I, I really like this programming environment much easier than uh, some of the other ones, Visual Studio and .NET and some of the ones, even though I love those, this is much easier and pretty darn powerful. And we're just, it builds us a template and kind of puts our, you know, general stuff in there. So we'll skip their little thing and uh, notice that it gives us this add fields, but it's already given us, you know, what we want, title, amount, and approved uh, by accounting. Okay. And uh, you can, if we go over on the left side, you can see we can mess with it here as well. And it does these with the, the data cards. And so if you come in here, you can't actually edit any of these uh, by default. So if you come in here, like if we go to that data card value and we look to what we're going to want to do is it's uh, it's enabled, which I don't see it at the moment. Actually, I think it's for the whole 
update a card. Let's try that one. Of course, I could have figured that out before I uh, got to this part in the video, but we'll let me pause for a minute and we'll uh, go in, search that out a little bit more, and come right back. All right, so we it didn't take me long. So I have to remember between our different ones, we have a display mode here, which uh, has like an edit or a view. And, you know, that's another way that you disable. So we'll go down that path, see if we can make that to work. But if you notice, if I go into, it says parent.display mode, but it's not editable. And that's where we edit it up here. So let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see it. So, so that's our... our um, display mode here, but it's grayed out. So what we need to do is we have to go over to this advanced thing over here and we have to unlock. Now notice once you unlock it, you can't uh, uh, fix it. You can't, un you can't lock it again, but you can still edit it. And so um, what we can do is we can say, okay, if And then we can say user dot that's user like that dot email we'll use to be similar to our others. We could do other ones equals, and I'm gonna just give it a, a bogus one for now for testing. So we'll say Joe at cool dot com like that. And then the way these work, the if, and then if it's true, then we do parent.display mode, which is current one, and otherwise we say display mode dot, and we just make it view all the time. Okay, so let me zoom in that one a little bit, a little bit more just so that we can, whoops, get over there, there we go. So you can see that a little bit more. And it'll tell you if there's, uh, you know, an error or whatever. So we're coming in and we're, and notice we're hard coding this email address, but we could do a list of them. You know, we could say if it's this or it's this, uh, you know, as a contains function. So we could do that. But for this sim simple one, we'll do it. So we'll take whatever the dis parent display mode is. So if it wasn't supposed to be edited anyway, we won't make it editable. But otherwise, we'll hard code it to just be in view and we won't be able to change it at all. So let's try that out. And what's nice about Power Apps is we can just, we don't have to go all the way back necessarily. We can preview it. Oh, actually, normally you can do that. But since we're doing it from SharePoint, we do actually have to because it needs the, the link to SharePoint. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll publish it back to SharePoint. And what I find it easy to do when we're editing these is to go ahead and leave this one open and we'll come in and open it directly in another tab. So let's do that. And let's hit new. And there we go. So that's kind of nice. So we can do, you know, buy a new laptop. We'll say it's uh fifteen hundred dollars but we can't change that at all but we can save it that looks good and if we come in there and edit it again can't change it so that's what we want nice now let's assume that I'm actually am a member of the accounting team and I want to go ahead and be one who can edit this so I'll go back here and I'll come in to this card, do that. By the way, you can do this format text, which is kind of nice, which comes in and puts it a little more readable. So I'm gonna say, this is my Office 365 username, platcanyon.onmicrosoft. Um, now I could have used display name and done a little bit less, but let's try that. And then I'll do the display mode view. So we're only just changing the user. And we'll save it. 
publish it to SharePoint. And we'll go over here and I need to reload just to make sure it's loaded all the stuff. Let's go in here and edit it. Ah, notice I can change it. So since I'm that user, I can approve it now and save it. So uh, we'll look at some more elaborate uh, bunches of different elaborate things for Power Apps and also just show you how we can do different things. So if we had a list that the user wanted to maintain, could we put that in a separate SharePoint list and, and let the eligible users be added and deleted there? Because we don't really want our users going into Power Apps and having to hard code those directly. But this gives us a start. Let's finish with one more thing on list settings, just in case you didn't know. Let's say we we messed up that form and we wanted to start over. What you can do is go to form settings here after we go to list settings and we can say we could switch it back to use the default form and then notice that we can then delete the custom form. So that can be kind of nice. So I'm not going to change that now, but if uh, we wanted to do that, we could. And then this use custom form and info pass actually disabled because you have to go in and make it a classic view. So you'd have to, if you wanted to make this an info pass instead, you have to use the default SharePoint form, delete that form, then change the list settings uh, under advanced settings. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.